Hi, and welcome to this graph theory video. We're going to look at what is the complement of a graph and what makes a graph self-complementary. The complement of a graph is a fairly straightforward idea. Let's take a look at a little example. Here we have a graph G on four vertices, and I'll draw the complement on the right side here, and we denote that by G bar. So I put in these edges, which are the edges that we're missing from the graph G. So in other words, if G is a graph of order n, the complement graph, denoted G bar, is the graph which has the same vertex set as G, but the edge set is equal to the edge set of the complete graph with the edges of the graph G removed. If we take a look at our little example and we think of G together with G bar, we'll see that that does form all of the edges of the complete graph on four vertices. Here I'll just draw the ones from the complement in yellow to distinguish them from the ones from the original graph. This means that the number of edges of the complement graph is equal to n choose 2 minus m, where m is the size of the edge set of the original graph. Remember, the reason why a complete graph has n choose 2 edges is because every pair of vertices need to be adjacent in a complete graph and the number of such pairs is n choose 2. So now let's continue. If we take a look at our example, we had m equal to 3, and 4 choose 2 is 6. So that's why our complement graph has the other three remaining edges. A graph G is called self-complementary if the graph is isomorphic to its complement. Let's take a look at an example. Here we have four vertices, and I'll draw in some edges, and that's the graph G. And if we take a look at the graph G complement, we see that it also has four edges, and not only that, both of these are examples of a path on four vertices, so they are isomorphic. Another example is if we take five vertices and we take one graph to be this five cycle, and the complement graph is then this five cycle. So both of these graphs are isomorphic to the five cycle, C5, and Thus, this is another example of a graph which is self-complementary. In the first example, n choose 2 equals 4 choose 2, which is 6, and each of g and g bar had 3 edges. In the second example, 5 choose 2 is 10, which is the number of edges of the complete graph of order 5, and each of g and g bar have 5 edges. So now we've seen an example of a self-complementary graph of order 4 and a self-complementary graph of order 5, and we may wonder if there is a self-complementary graph of order 6. Okay, so think about this question for a minute and see if you can draw such a graph. Now if you want, you can pause because now I'm going to tell you the answer. The answer is no, since 6 choose 2 is equal to 15, which is odd. In other words, the complete graph of order 6 has 15 edges, and in order for a graph to be self-complementary, it would have to have the same number of edges as its complement, but obviously those 15 edges cannot be equally divided into two pieces. So really what we've done is we've stumbled upon this fact. A self-complementary graph of order n must have one half of n choose 2, which equals n times n minus 1 over 4 edges. Therefore, if g is a graph of order n which is self-complementary, then n times n minus 1 must be divisible by 4. In other words, n must be congruent to 0 or 1 mod 4. So if we take a look at n equals 4, we can find an example, and n equals 5, we can find an example, because those were 0 and 1 mod 4 respectively. But n equals 6, we will never find an example because it's 2 mod 4. Similarly, for n equals 7, we cannot find an example because it's 3 mod 4. Now, for n equals 8 and 9, this satisfies the condition. These are congruent to either 0 or 1 mod 4, but right off the bat, we don't know the existence of a self-complementary graph of these orders. However, there is a nice algorithm to build self-complementary graphs based on smaller self-complementary graphs. So let's take a look. Given a self-complementary graph G of order n, we can construct a self-complementary graph G prime of order n plus 4 as follows. We take our original graph G, and it has some number of vertices in it. Remember, this number is either 0 or 1 mod 4. And then we add on some new vertices here in pink with these edges in between them to make up this path on four vertices. 
So what we're doing is we're adding the path P4 on vertices V1, V2, V3, and V4, and then we join vertex V2 and vertex V3 to all of the vertices in the graph G. So I'll draw the edges from V2 to all of the vertices of the graph G in green and the ones that go to V3 in red. You should check for yourself that this graph we've constructed is indeed self-complementary, and clearly the number of vertices is n plus 4. So now, since we have a construction for an example when n equals 4, this means we can make one when n equals 8. And since we have one for n equals 5, we can make one for n equals 9. Similarly, because we have one for n equals 8, we can make one for n equals 12. And because we have one for n equals 9, we can make one for n equals 13. And we can keep going like this. So we've just learned that having order 0 or 1 mod 4 is a necessary and sufficient condition for the existence of a self-complementary graph of order n. Pretty cool. Hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.